He says, I keep watch over my word to establish it. He's watching over his word to make sure it happens. If God is within you, God is saying, you will not fall and neither will you fail. You will not be disgraced. You will not be ashamed in the name of Jesus. The Lord God will help you at the break of the day. In the dawn of the morning, the Lord will come true for you. At the 99 hour, the Lord will come true for you. Why? Because God is within you. You must believe him. You must trust him that he has the capacity. He has all the resources to make his word happen. His word will happen in your life. In 2022, you will not be disgraced. You will not be confounded. You will not be ashamed. Maritally, you will not be put to shame. Financially, you will not be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. Fathers don't make noise. We know they make noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Majestic rivers flow with deep silence. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. You know they make, you know now stream where we say now small water, they, they do brruk, 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 brruk. You just do brruk, brruk, brruk. But the one that is full, just is moving with huge currents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys, I know you won't disappoint me. I trust you. Mo Jerry, I know. Look at that classical talk show. Did you gain something? A lot. Amen? I sat there and I was just nodding my head. I said, yeah, yeah, you guys, keep on, man. Hallelujah. It's balance between career and entrepreneurship. Everybody cannot be a David. Everybody cannot be, what's the name of the lady? Olumun Yorai. See me? Everybody cannot be, who is the, give me a footballer's name. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Hallelujah. We still need people that will pursue their careers. We need plumbers. We need electricians. We need career people. We need administrators. We need accountants. We need bankers. Hallelujah. Amen. And I love what was said. That the craze now is everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. You want to be an, and then you see people jumping into business. One year they've jumped out. Tomorrow you see them doing something else. Five years, six years, nothing. And they're just roaming about, jumping from one place to the other. And I love one of the speakers said, he says, know yourself. You must know what God has cut you out to be. You must discover yourself. Hallelujah. You must discover yourself. Watch out, KBS 2022. Hallelujah. There's a message I've been cooking for about two or three years that I'm here to deliver on how to discover yourself. We're different in the body. Hallelujah. Some of you are the air type people. Some of you are the hand type people. If you're a hand type person, you, you must just get something doing sewing or cooking or things like that. Hallelujah. And if you are the head type of people, those are the strategic thinkers. They can't get to doing those kind of works. They must be strategy, you know, people that are thinking and churning out the policies. You can be in civil service, can be in the government. Hallelujah. And if you are the leg type, even if they give you this mighty office, it will be empty. Because your leg, no go, your yes, no go one seat. You go one the waka. So moving from one office to the other. You must know yourself. Do you understand? You know, so we're different. And you need God to help you to discover who you are. Not because your brother is doing this, your sister is doing this and is prospering. Uh, Pastor Toyin is a successful career person. And then you too. When you know, say you're, you're a leg type. 
For a left time, you are not cut out to sit in one place. Move from one place to the other. Hallelujah. Move from place to place. Let's give it up to our fathers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for refreshing us. We are blessed. And uh, we trust God that um, the Lord will perfect that which has to do with us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm exceedingly proud of our fathers, our mothers, and our youth. And I thank God for your lives. And I know that God's investment over your lives will bring forth fruits a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. I say you will fulfill your mark even in your generation. You will discover who you are in God in the name of Jesus. And not only will you discover who you are, the Lord himself, and by the grace of God, the house that he has put you, PPA fan, will help you to hone those skills and sharpen you so that you can become a sharp shooter wherever you are in Jesus' name. And not only that, we will help you to deploy those gifts it's one thing for you to discover your giftings and discover who you are. It's another for you to hone it, to hone, H-O-N-E, to develop it. You must develop that gift, and then you must be released to fulfill your calling. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, this morning, I just have a few words to speak into our lives, especially our fathers. And um, I trust God that within a few minutes, I will be able to just uh, do that. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm so excited for what God is doing. These times are tough times. How many of you agree with me? They are very difficult times. But when you know who you are in God, then it becomes easy. The only reason why it will be easy is because of the help of God. On your own, on my own, on our own, there's nothing we can do. We are not different from the world. Though we are not of the world, but we are in the world. Hallelujah. And we are affected by the things that are happening in the world. Faith does not deny the facts. But we know that there is a superior word which we operate with, which is called the word of truth. But we don't deny the fact. The fact is the country is tough. Things are tough. Money is in scarce supply. Inflation has risen. Hallelujah. But because we are in Christ, and our lives are not just hid in Christ, but in God, and God has given us an assurance of divine help, we know that we will not be disgraced. And we will not be shamed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning, happy Father's Day once again to all our fathers in the house and all fathers all over the world. We celebrate you and we trust that the Lord will enlarge your coast and your capacity and give you all the endowment that you need to be a true father in Jesus' name. The theme of our Father's Day's message is made in his image. Made in his image. But before I proceed, the, today's daily devotional, which is shared amongst all of you, especially our royal couples. I don't know about you, but I read and enjoy them daily. Hallelujah. Is today says, be a father to your children. And you permit me to read that devotional even as we start. Um, a beloved radio commentator, Paul Harvey, wrote, at a time when, please listen attentively, everyone. Hallelujah. It's Father's Day, but I want you to know that this is our day. We have our husbands as fathers. We have children as children. We have our fathers as uh, nephews, we have fathers, as our uncles, and what have you. Hallelujah. 
So listen, says the beloved radio commentator Paul Harvey wrote, at a time when being a booty a body, I don't know which one is, which one you call it, a body. Being a body to your son, to one son is popular, I am going to stay a father. If a gap exists between my sons and daughters and myself, I am going to work hard to understand, but I'm also going to work hard to be understood. Are you following? If there are gaps between my sons, my daughters, and myself, I will work hard to understand what the gap is, and I will also work hard to be understood. Because relationship is a two-way traffic. When they tell it like it is, I will listen. Even if I like it better the way it was. If old-fashioned things such as prayer, Bible study, worship, and faith in God ever seem to my children to be out of date, square, or whatever, I trust God's help to have faith enough to yet pray for them. In other words, I'm not going to throw them away. And I pledge with the patriarch Job to offer additional sacrifices for them. You remember Job? His children while partying, they were partying. He has seven sons and three daughters. And every day of the week, one son is declaring a party on Monday, the second son Tuesday. The seven sons take one day each and they are throwing parties all year round. Glory to God. It says, I pledge with the patriarch Job to offer additional sacrifices for them. With love in our home, I will answer their questions about the facts of life. But at nudeness and lewdness, I refuse to wink. If experimentation with drugs or marijuana is ever a problem, it will be in violation of my every prayer and request. I want my children to know that I make mistakes. We fathers, we are not perfect. That I am foolish, proud, and often inconsistent. That's Paul Harvey writing. I'm reading what he wrote. Hallelujah. But I will not tolerate that as an excuse for my hypocrisy. I will ask them to help me change and expect me to help them change. Because life is a two-way traffic and relationship is a two-way traffic. Others may look to the under 30 crowd for the wisdom to throw away the past. Because that's what many under 30s are doing. Everything is old school. They don't want to hear it. But you need the wisdom of the old to get to where you are going. You are where you are because of the wisdom of the old that have guided you when you knew nothing. Now that you think you know, don't discard that wisdom. You need it for you to get to where you are desiring to get to. Can I have an amen? Amen. Others may look to the under 30 crowd for the wisdom to throw away the past and to say what will remain for future generations. Others may let the offspring in the house determine the foods, the music, and the spending of the household. You know what that means? There are some homes, it's the children that is controlling everything. It's what the children want to eat that the whole family eats. It's where the children want to go. The children are the ones because the parents think they are living for the children. That is a misnomer. What do they know? Hallelujah. Well, here is conclusion. Let me read that phrase. That's the last paragraph. Others may look to the under 30 crowd for the wisdom to throw away the past and to say what will remain for future generations. Others may let the offspring, thank you, others may let the offspring in the house determine the foods, the music, and the spending of the household. But I am going to stay a father. Hallelujah. I thought the fathers would give me a round of applause. I thought the mothers would support us. And I thought our children would support our youth. 
Hallelujah. Fathers, that's my first message to you. You must stay a father. You must remain a father. Don't abandon your duty post. Don't abandon your responsibility. Stay true to God's calling upon your life. Hallelujah. We are not perfect. We don't know it all. We may be foolish at times. We may be hard to be understood at times. But let's do all to make sure we are understood. And let's do all to make sure that we understand our followers, our spouses, and our children. Hallelujah. His grace will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. Can I have a bigger amen? amen. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 26 to 28 is our text. On which day did God make man? On which day? On which day? Sixth day. Then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. God didn't bless him. He blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Friends, because of our time, I'm going to try and compress all this. I want to get this done. I have about seven propositions here. And then we'll read the scriptures as we go along. The first proposition is that God created mankind in his image and in his likeness. He created mankind in his image and in his likeness, in his nature. He made us in his nature. He created us in his nature. Jesus had cause to ask his disciples, you are asking of the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Say so I've been with you all of this while and you are still asking who is God. Say if you have seen me you have seen the father. Is the express image. Please give me Hebrews chapter 1. Let's read Hebrews 1 1 to 3. So when we're talking of being made in the image and the likeness of God, I want you to connect what exactly it means. It means made in the nature of God. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed, hey, of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, so if you are wondering, Christ is the brightness of his glory and he was made in the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself put our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Christ is a reflection, the brightness of God's glory and the express image of God's person. So Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So when we are made in the likeness and the nature of God, I want you to know that everything that makes God, God, we have been made in that image. We have the creative ability that God has. If you doubt it, how is the aeroplane flying? How is such a large ship, 300 meters, 
carrying 14 stories on the sea? How did they do it? How did they create it? Because we have been made in his image and in his likeness. We have his nature. His creative nature is in us. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. We have been made in his image and in his likeness. Genesis 1 1. Let's read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was overing over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God created the heavens and the earth. And there was darkness upon the face of the deep. And gross darkness. And yet the spirit of God began to move. And God said. And order was restored. Can I have an amen? Yeah. If he has made us in his image. And beyond that. You are fortunate to have received his Holy Spirit. What else do you need? And he has given you his word, his creative word. What else do you need? Whatever darkness that is around you, the Lord will re-energize your mouth. He will re-energize your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In other words, when we are told that God has made us in his image and in his likeness, is so that any darkness that is around us, any darkness that may be in our families, any darkness that may be in our neighborhood, every void, everything that is not going according to plans, he has equipped us to be able to speak order into them. Can I have an amen? amen. Uh, do you understand what we are saying? There was darkness, there was void, and the Spirit of God was moving, and God said, his word came forth. So if he has made you in his image and in his likeness, I want you to know that you have been equipped and you are fortunate to have the Holy Spirit on your inside. You have everything. You have everything you need to turn every disorder into order. To turn every darkness and bring light into it. To turn every disarray and bring about the order of God even there in the name of Jesus. And whatever it is you may be going through as a family, I pray and I decree the order of God into that family. Whatever your businesses are going through, I speak the words of life and I command order into those businesses in the name of Jesus. I speak into the life of every turbulent career. I command the order of God to be restored in the name of Jesus. Number two, second proposition. This confers, in other words, our being created in his image and in his likeness, confers on mankind an appointment as God's royal representatives to rule the earth and have dominion in God's place. In other words, number two, I'm talking of the second proposition, the fact that you have been made in God's image and in his likeness confers on mankind an appointment as God's royal representatives. In other words, sonship. To rule the earth and have dominion in his place. We have read Genesis 1. is from there. Let's read it from the message translation. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. It confers on mankind an appointment by God as his royal representative, as his son to rule upon the face of the earth. And to have dominion. Then God said, message. Let's read it from the message. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. So that they can be what? To have dominion means to be responsible for. So that they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself. And every animal that moves on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Let's read on 27. God created human beings. He created them God-like, like God, reflecting God's nature 
He created them male and female. And look at 28. God bless them. Prosper. May you prosper. Reproduce. May you reproduce. Fill the earth. May you fill the earth. May you fill your environment. May you take charge and be responsible for your environment. In the name of Jesus. It says, take charge and be responsible for fish in the sea, bugs in the air, and for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Look at how powerful God has made you. Look at the grace he has bestowed upon you. He has given you an appointment to be responsible, to be his representative, to rule and have dominion, and to be responsible for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. It says, fill the earth, take charge, and be responsible. Are you taking charge of your family? Or you have abandoned your role as a father? Are you taking charge, woman? Mankind, mankind there, Adam is the word mankind. And mankind has no gender, it's male and female, it's them. Hallelujah. He created them, he blessed them, and said to them, be fruitful. Mankind there is gen- it's, it's neutral, g- gender neutral. He's talking to women and men. He wants us to prosper, to reproduce, to fill the earth, to take charge and be responsible. Are we taking responsibility? Are we taking charge of our environment? Or we are folding our hands and saying, go better. God has made you his regent right here upon the face of the earth. To rule in his place. To have dominion in his place. To be responsible for. To take charge. Made in his image. We have his nature. Shout hallelujah. May you rise up to fill your position. May you rise up to take charge. May you rise up to become responsible. May you become responsible fathers, responsible mothers, responsible children. In the name of Jesus, the mandate of our lives is that of taking responsibility. Glory to God. Number three, the third proposition. The perpetuation of this image and blessing are realized through sonship. The perpetuation or succession, the succession of this image and the associated blessings, the fact that he has made you in his image, if it's going to be perpetuated or if it's going to be a succession, it is through sonship. It is through sonship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go with me to Genesis chapter 5. Let's read Genesis 5 from verse 1. We can start from chapter 4 verses, the last two verses. Genesis 4, the last two verses. Give us the last two verses of 4 before we jump into 5. The last two verses. It's 20. Hallelujah. Thank you. And Adam knew his wife again. She bore his son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, To him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Now go to chapter 5. This is the book of the genealogy of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of what? In the likeness of God, in the nature of God. He created them, male and female, blessed them, and called them mankind called them mankind, male and female, in the day they were created. Verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his likeness, in his own likeness, after his image and named him Seth. So sonship 
And after I begot said the days of Abraham, where is Cain here? Where is Cain? I thought he had killed Abel, but he was still alive. But in the genealogy of Adam, was he mentioned? May your name not be blotted out in God's book. For lack of responsibility, may you not be blotted out. In the name of Jesus. In the genealogy of Adam, Cain was never mentioned anymore. It was now Seth. Because he failed to be responsible. He failed to take charge of his brother. Responsibility means having the ability to respond properly. Responsibility. Having the ability to respond rightly in any situation. Can I have an amen? When a man lacks responsibility, he's denying the dominion mandate upon his life. Any office you are working as a clerk, as a houseboy, when you shack your responsibility, you are weakening and denying the dominion mandate of God upon your life. Did someone hear me? Any role you are, you are whether you are a house boy or house girl, if you are going to fulfill the mandate of being made in his image, you must learn to take responsibility. Cain was denied. This is the genealogy of Adam, then Seth. Hallelujah. But go back to verse 3. Go back to verse 3. Let me show you. As I've said, I gave you the point. I said the perpetuation of that image and his blessing is true sonship. It's realized true sonship. Look at verse 3. Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness. So, sonship is what will grant you succession. Can I have an amen? The perpetuation of the image and the blessing is through sonship. In other words, if you don't grow up to become sons, the blessings may not be realized in us. Is someone here? The dominion mandate is multiplied, is perpetuated, is succeeded as a result of sonship. So if we don't grow up into sonship, the blessings may elude us. But you will not be eluded. In the name of Jesus. You must grow up from a child. Grow up to become a boy. And grow up to become a son. I don't have enough time. I will show you in Luke chapter 2. How the boy Jesus, the child, we saw a child Jesus that was brought to the temple to be dedicated. He grew to become a boy. And from a boy, he became a man, Jesus. And he kept growing. A sonship that will guarantee you that blessing of being made in his, in his likeness. Can I have an amen? amen? Can I have a bigger amen? amen? You must make growing intentionally part and parcel of your lifestyle. You had it today, career growth. If you don't grow, you ain't going nowhere. You must add value to yourself spiritually intellectually, emotionally, you must grow. You can't be the same one yesterday. You came into church, you are somebody who gets angry easily, you are so flippant or you talk anyhow. After one year in PPA fan, you must have grown to become tempered. Can I have an amen? You must grow. Number four. Proposition number four. With the fall of man, mankind bore the image of the first man, the man of the dust. With the fall of mankind, please, I need you to understand this. With the fall of mankind, man bore the image, or mankind bore the image of the first man, the man of the dust. Still in verse 3, is there. Now Adam had fallen. He lived 130 years, and he begot a son in whose likeness? His own likeness. The fallen Adam. In his fallen nature. After his image. And named himself. Hallelujah. That's what happens. So that's the difference between a man. That is born again. A man of the spirit. And a man who is falling. 
Every man remains in this state until you get saved and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Can I have an amen? amen? And that's why we will take on the image of our fathers, the image of our mothers. Hello? We'll resemble them physically. Spiritually, we'll resemble them. The DNA working in them is working in us. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have a bigger amen? amen? And when we embrace Christ, some of the things that are not good that we have inherited, we begin to drop them as we move towards the image of his son. Can I have an amen? We have had people whose fathers and parents, please pardon me, I said just for illustration purpose, I don't mean any harm. Whose parents or something have a particular type of sickness. Maybe they are diabetic. And then we inherit that gene. Because we become made in their image and in their likeness. But when you embrace Christ and you have the Holy Spirit, he will begin to help you to drop off those bad traits, those things that are not right in their lives. The Holy Spirit will begin to help you to drop them as you walk towards the, becoming the image of his son. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. With the fall of man, mankind bore the image of the first man, the man of the dust. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 49. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And as we have bought the image of the man of the dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the privilege we have. We can now be restored to the default when God created us in his image and in his likeness. When we receive Christ, we begin to bear the image of the heavenly man. And then that picture that God had in mind of dominion, of taking responsibility, of taking charge, we then become restored and activated. Can I have an amen? amen. Glory to God. Proposition number five. However, the image of Christ is the Christian's destiny. The image of Christ is our destiny. The image of Christ is our destiny. 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Let's read from verse 7 to 12 quickly. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and the glory of God. For woman is the glory of man. For man is not from woman. Please listen. Fathers, it's important you hear this. And house is important. Mothers as well. For man is not from woman. Up men. Up fathers. You are not from woman. Don't rejoice yet. But woman from man. I heard Elder Kufri mentioning that, you know, uh, we were the one, the first meet. Uh, so I was saying, <laughs> I will dismantle this thing you are saying. Hallelujah. Because I'm neither for men or women. I'm for the two of you. I'm for all of you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I belong to no one. Eh? I belong to everybody. I, I, and I belong to no one. Hallelujah. For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Nor was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. Rejoice little. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Don't stop there. Go on. I know that's where men like to stop. Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. Look at the next verse. Hallelujah. For as woman came from man, even so man also comes through. The equation is balanced. 
don't braggado us and say, yes, I walk on like that. In the Lord, we are the same. Can I have an amen? Yeah. Can I have a big amen? Yeah. I thought the women's amen would be louder. Yeah. Hallelujah. Fathers, I thought our amen would be louder. Yeah. Hallelujah. As the woman came from man, even so man also comes true. But all things are from God. Shout hallelujah. The word of God is balanced. The woman is not independent of the man. Neither is the man independent of the woman. Stop braggadocio in where, you, where there is nothing. In the Lord. Let's stay focused. And be one another's helpers of destinies. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verses 29 and 30. The image of Christ is the Christian's destiny. That is our destiny. To be in the image of Christ. Romans 8, 29 and 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to who? The image of his son. That is our destiny. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He's the firstborn. And every one of us that have accepted him, we are also born of God. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. May you become glorified in the name of Jesus. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, give us verse 11 in the message. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3, 11. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish. Okay. Religious and irreligious. Insider and outsider. Uncivilized and uncouth. Slave and free. They mean from now on, everyone is defined by who? And everyone is included in. Glory to God. Stop looking. When you look at those things, I don't have time to break them down for you. Jewish, non-Jewish, religious, irreligious, insider, outsider, uncivilized, uncouth, slave, free, uh, Fulani, Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. This, that is nonsense. It says they mean nothing. They mean nothing. When Christ came, he broke down those barriers. He called us out of every tribe out of every nation to become the bride of Christ. Can I have an amen? amen? That's why I will look at my mother in the face and tell her, you know what? If you want to marry your daughter, go and marry her. Have you got the pennies that you will use to marry your daughter? Say, how can my daughter marry an acquired man that he will never be able to speak? I'm an illiterate. I cannot speak English. Now, I will not agree. I allowed them. And then I now went to her. Say, you are tying down your daughter's destiny. Hallelujah. Say, so, okay. Glory to God. Is he doing a good job? Yes. Is the acquired born man doing a good job? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know the reason? In Christ, all means nothing. Everyone is defined by Christ. And everyone is included in Christ. Our destiny as believers is the image of Christ. Glory to God. Proposition number six. I think I'm doing well with my time. Proposition number six. If that mandate is going to be efficacious upon our lives, if that dominion mandate, the mandate to take responsibility, the mandate to take charge, the mandate to fill the earth, the mandate to be fruitful, if it is going to be efficacious upon our lives, then we must intentionally get rid of the traces of the contaminants of the old man. 
Remember, before we became born again, what happened? We bought the image of the fallen man, the man of the dust. Now Christ came and he has saved us and delivered us. And then we begin to walk towards the image of Christ. We must intentionally get rid of the traces and the contaminants of the old man. And what do I mean? A life shared by things and feelings. We'll read two verses of scripture. Two passages. Ephesians 4. To illustrate this. Ephesians 4. Verses 20 to 24. Ephesians 4. 20 to 24. Quickly. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him. And have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. That you put off. Everyone say put off. Put off concerning your former conduct. The old man. Which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man. Which was created according to God. In true righteousness and holiness. There must be a putting off of those contaminants. Traces and contaminants of the old man. You must put them off. So that the new man can put on the new man. And be who God designed you to be. In the name of Jesus. Let's read this in the message. And get the juice out of it. Glory to God. But that's no life for you. You learned Christ. Say learn Christ. You must learn Christ daily. You must keep learning about him. Becoming more like him by the day. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him. Being well instructed in the truth. Precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Say, ignorance is not an excuse. The word is available, it's nigh you, it's everywhere. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to, must do away with the contaminants, every traces of those contaminants. I loved what one of my pastors said. I got born again a couple of few years ago. And my good friend was the one preaching, Reverend Sam Adeyemi, in our ministry then. And one of the things, and we got talking, you know, and it became my only friend that I had. And, we be, and he said, you know what, bro? Whatever it is, this new life, whatever it is you are doing, just do 180 degrees and keep going in a new direction until you discover the word of God that confirms that that thing was right. Hallelujah. So when you have a girlfriend... That's the way I took the instruction, hook, line, and sinker. I had a girlfriend, and we're doing all manners of nonsense. What do I do? 180. Thank you. I did 180. Because, look, until I discovered the new path, he says, everything, I mean everything connected with the old way of life has to go. You can't carry it over. Everything that is connected with the old way of life must get rid of the traces of those contaminants that will not allow your new man to fly. Shout hallelujah. It says it's rotten, true and true. Get rid of it and then take on an entirely new way of life. A God-fashioned life. May the Lord fashion your life for him. I say may the Lord fashion your life for him. May you receive the courage to do away with the old in the name of Jesus. Because many of us, the carryovers of the old man is what is frustrating our work in the Lord. There are many fathers, they can't quit drinking. They can't quit smoking. They can't quit womanizing. Yes, they are born again. They are speaking in tongues. Does it mean the Holy Spirit is not in them? They have the Holy Spirit. It's just that they are hooked on the old man. But today, in this year's Father's Day, 
I decree that every father struggling with the old way of life, may you receive freedom. May you receive freedom in the name of Jesus. If you are struggling with womanizing, may you receive freedom. If you are struggling with booze, may you receive freedom. If you are struggling with weed, may you receive freedom in the name of Jesus. And that's why they are not productive. Their new man is not productive. They are not operating in dominion. They can't take responsibility because of the traces of the old way of life. Says, take, take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. He wants to create, he wants to produce, he wants to reproduce his nature in you, his character in you. Not the character of your father or of your mother. It's his character he wants to produce. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. May the Lord impact you with this grace in the name of Jesus. May the character and the nature of God be reproduced in you. May his nature be reproduced in you. May his character be reproduced in you in the name of Jesus. Colossians, let's quickly go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Read straight the message, verses 5 to 11. Verses 5 to 11. And that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. The way of death is the old man. You must kill off everything connected with that way of death. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it. This is the harmless and yet is the most dangerous. Sexual promiscuity. Uh, I mean, after all, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, don't, I don't get moved. Many believers don't get involved in that. And many also do. But deliverance is coming your way today. In the name of Jesus. Impurity, lust. But this look at this subtle and dangerous one. Doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it. Some come to church whenever they feel like. Some pay their tithes. They bring their tithes into the storehouse whenever they feel like. If they don't feel like, they just don't feel like. Grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. Isn't it? They don't cross-check with the Holy Spirit. They don't cross-check with the one who gave them the resources. Whatever it is that grabs their fancy and they can afford it, they buy it. That's a life that is shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. Is your life shaped by things? Is your life shaped by feelings? Next verse. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. May, his, may he not explode in anger over your life. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. Yes, when you are not yet born again, it's allowed. Every sinner, every saint was once a sinner. So once upon a time, you were doing that. That's okay. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Can I have an amen? Yeah. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk. Now you know better. They shouldn't be mentioned amongst you. Don't lie to one another. You are done with that old life. Be clean. Be straightforward. Let it be what they see is what they get. Don't say A and you mean B. Don't say A to B and B to A. You bring people's heads and knock their heads together. Hey, God is watching. He's watching. Don't lie to one another. You are done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you stripped off and put in the fire. Strip them off. Now you are dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new wardrobe is custom made by the creator. 
with his label on it. All the old fashions are now up. When God's look, look at look at look at what he's saying. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the Creator with his label. God, not Gucci, not Ferragamo. Hallelujah. Let everything you do have the label of God. The way you speak, the way you carry yourself, the way you respond to people. Hallelujah. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Eleven. Words, and then we read that earlier. Like Jewish, non-Jewish, religious, irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized, uncowed, slave and free. They mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. And everyone is included in Christ. Shout hallelujah. Can I have a big amen? amen? So let me take on the last proposition. You are made in his image, the image of Christ, so that you can be a solution provider to your world. So that you can be a solution provider to your world. That's why he made you in his image, as his representative. That wherever you go, they see God. In your neighborhood, they see God. In your office, they see God at work. Wherever it is you are, they see God at work in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's why he made you in his image. So that you can feel the earth for him. So that the earth can feel God's impact through you. He wants you to take responsibility for every environment you find yourself. At work, at home, in your neighborhood. He wants you to spread forth the sweet aroma of his presence. That's why he made you in his image as his regent and as his representative here on earth. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, we see Jesus as a life giver and light bearer and is the embodiment of the creativity of God without whom nothing was created. Let's go to John chapter 1. John 1, 1, New King James Version. John chapter 1, let's quickly read from verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And nothing, all things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Is the embodiment of creativity. Right? All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. The embodiment of creativity, verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Glory to God. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jump to verse 14. And then that life. Verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and of truth. Hallelujah. You fathers, all fathers in the house and hearing us, you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So you are a new creation. And 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1 says, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. So we are imitators of Christ. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. So we are a new creation and we are imitators of Christ. Amen? That means you have become an active part of member of God's creative activity. Because you are a new creation. And it says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And we saw in John 1 that we read 1 to 4, nothing was made that was made 
that did not, was not made through him. So you have the grace for creativity upon your life. You are a new creation created to create things, to bring about order. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. In other words, you must embody the life and the light of Jesus Christ in whatever context to which you have been called. In him was life, verse 4 says, and the life was the light of men. So you, as a father, you, as mankind, a woman, mother, or child, you are an embodiment of the life and light of Jesus Christ in whatever context to which you are called. Can I have an amen? Just as Christ, in him was life, and the life was the light of men, you also to become an embodiment of the life and the light of God. Glory to God. In closing, I will give us three framework. Write this down. God wants you to become creative leaders. Fathers, mothers, God wants you to become creative. And creative leaders promote creative organizations by developing creative climates and modeling creative behaviors. Creative leaders, they promote creative organizations by developing creative climates and modeling creative behaviors. How shall this thing be? Let me give you the framework through which we see Jesus related with his followers and through which you as fathers and as leaders and as mankind, our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, our sons and our daughters, Glory to God. Let me give us that framework through which you also can foster that creative process to bring fresh life and illumination to those in your corner. Can I have an amen? amen. In him was life and the life was the light of men. You also can bring life and illumination to every dark areas of your corner. Can I have an amen? amen? The first is through your spoken word. It's through your spoken word. In John chapter 1 verse 1, we just saw it. We just read it. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Talking of your spoken word. Jesus used this. And God wants you in the mold of our Lord Jesus Christ as fathers, particularly today, on Father's Day, God expects you to paint mental portraits in the minds of your followers through effective communication. Communication. He wants you to paint mental portraits in the minds of your followers through words so that you can bring fresh life and illumination to their lives. Who are those your followers as a father? your spouse, your children, your sons, your daughters, your colleagues in your marketplace, your neighbors in the area where you live. These are your followers. So God expects you through the spoken word to paint mental pictures in the minds of your followers through effective communication. We tell young people who want to go into marriage, everything is communication, communication, communication. The tendency to people who have never lived together. You may be saying A and she's hearing B. But God expects you to bring life, fresh life and illumination to situations and to their lives through effective communication, through the spoken word. Hallelujah. Proverbs 25, 11. A word fitly spoken in due season is like apples of gold in the settings of silver. A word that is fitly spoken. When you speak the right word, it'll be like apples of gold in settings of silver. Hallelujah. 
Proverbs 15.23. A man has joy, Proverbs 15.23, by the answer of his mouth. And a word that is spoken in due season, how good it is. Communication. Shout hallelujah. If you are going to foster creativity in your home, you must be able to communicate effectively. If you are going to foster creativity at work, you must be able to use words to paint the right mental picture in the minds of those you are leading. Can I have an amen? Can I have a bigger amen? Can I have a bigger amen? The second thing is visibility. Visibility. John 1.4 In him was life and the life was the light of men. Visibility. This has to do with vision casting. You use spoken words to cast the right vision. Can I have an amen? You use spoken words to paint the right mental picture. The right picture in the minds of your followers. Of where you are going. What you are doing. The assignment to be done. Glory to God. I said you use spoken words. Number two, you use is visibility. The word gave life to everything that was created. Give me John 1, 4, New Living Translation. John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. I'll be done in a few minutes and we'll pray. The word gave life to everything that was created. And its life brought what? Light to everyone. Brought visibility. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Shout hallelujah. Give me John 8, 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Remember, this is what Jesus used to foster creativity amongst his people, his disciples. And we have been made in his image. We can also use the same principles. Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness but they have the light of life. Can that be said of you? Are you ready to show the way to those who are following you? Are you ready to cast the vision through spoken words? Are you ready to change their mentality, to paint the right mental picture of where God is taking you to? Glory to God. John 12, 46. John 12, 46. I have come as light into the world. That whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Hallelujah. Because you will be visible, you will show them the path of life. You will cast the right vision before them. Friends, listen. You have a responsibility to help your followers see the path towards shared goals. You must be the one that will show them. You must help them to see the path towards your shared goals. In other words, you must cast the right vision for them. Fathers, this is your assignment. Casting the right vision to your family, to your wife, to the children. Hallelujah. In your office, you must cast the right vision. You must show them the path. Glory to God. And last but not the least, John chapter 1 verse 14. John 1 14. Incarnational presence. The word became flesh. And dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. What does that mean? That is talking of modeling the desired outcomes. The word became flesh. The word you are speaking. What you are preaching. Are you living it? Are you living it? Are you living it? You can tell your children to pray from now to tomorrow. If they never see that day and mommy pray. That word amounts to nothing. The word became flesh. You must model the outcome that you expect. Even to your staff. You are telling your staff, do this in the office, and they know a guy doesn't do it. It will just fall to the ground. If you are going to engage, if you are going to walk in the path of this creative ability that God has given us, then you must speak the right words, cast the right vision, and thirdly, you must model the expected outcomes to your people. Can I have an amen? amen? Fathers, I challenge you today. Model change by incarnationally living out the desired outcomes to your family, to those in the marketplace, to your colleagues, 
to your neighborhood, model that which you are preaching to them. Shout hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet this morning as we go into prayers. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we are grateful to you. Made in his image. He has made us in his own image and in his likeness. We are an embodiment of God's creativity. We are his embodiment. The creative juice of God is upon our lives. It's upon our lives. And he wants us to promote, it, to promote creative organizations. How? By developing the creative climate and modeling creative behaviors. We can model the creative behaviors. Hallelujah. We can. We can show them the path of life. Cast the right vision. Speak the right words. Use those words to cast the right vision. And don't just leave it there. Model what you are saying to your people. And you see how this creative ability will become reproduced in your organization. You see how creativity will become bathed. Even in your place, in your workplace. Creativity will become the order of the day in your family. Solutions will be bathed to things that are either too tough. You see situations that are tough becoming simple. Why? Because you are modeling creativity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your voice and let's pray for 60 seconds. Say, Lord, help me. Multiply this grace for creativity upon my life. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I don't know which of these propositions you are falling short of. Whether you are still walking in the old path of the old man. Lord, help me to do away with the traces of the old man that is hindering me from walking in the full power of the creativity that I am an embodiment of. You are an embodiment of creativity, but the old life will hinder you. It will hinder the creative ability of God in you. Ask him to help you in the name of Jesus. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Three things you can use to foster this creative process. Your words. can use your words to paint the right picture, to paint the right picture, to cast the right vision. And thirdly, you must be ready to model that creativity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sandarabo shikaturia. Magarabo siketeria mamazanta. Raka baba sekoto to praku jengeteria. Oh, maraba sekatoria mashikata. Mezende rimo sufre kashikataro. Ropa sekatoria mashikata. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to pray for our families. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If there is any darkness in your relationship with your spouse, you know things are out of order. You know it yourself. There's no deceiving yourself. And you are saying, Lord, I just need your help today. Today is Father's Day. We have been made in your image. Whatever it is that has gone out of order in my life, in my marriage especially, in my relationship, help us. Let your light shine upon it and restore your order. Lift up your voice and let us pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Perhaps you know your uncle, you know your aunt whose marriage is in darkness, whose family life is in shambles. Why don't you use them as a point of contact? And let us pray for the next 120 seconds and say, Lord, help this family of mine. Help my family. Help my uncle. Help my auntie. Help my brother. Help my sister. In the name of Jesus. Raka shekato tie probobobo zegata. Mazanduroba shekata. Raka bababa zegetoria mashikata. Lift your voice and pray for your family. Use your family as a point of contact. In the name of Jesus. Yes, that darkness will be dispelled. In the name of Jesus, that order will be restored. That restoration of order in the name of Jesus. That order will be restored in the name of Jesus. Reka sakatoria baba. Mezandarabo sheketoria. Rakoba bazanderia mama zanderia baba. Rakoba baba sheketoria mazagaza. Lord, I pray for every family in PPA fan that in the name of Jesus, your order will be restored. Light and life. Your life. Your, the freshness of your life will be injected into those marriages. And illumination will dispel every darkness that is in those marriages, that is in those homes, that is in those families. In the name of Jesus, we use our families as a point of contact to their friends' families, their family friends, their uncles, their aunties. In the name of Jesus, on this occasion of Father's Day 2022, visit our families and do a new thing. 
Do a new thing for them like never before. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God is too good. Oh. Hey! Anybody say, this God is too good. Ha -ha. Can I get a witness? This God is too good. This God is too good. Shut 